Good afternoon to one and all. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Mrs. Lalita Naidu with us today. Uh, she's a senior principal at Rockwoods International School. She's an educationist of long standing with a Master of Philosophy in Education. She has close to three decades of experience in the field of education. She's been heading schools for 25 years now. She rose from the ranks of a teacher to being a head. She was the founder principal of Shadan Group of Modern Schools. She headed the Diamond Jubilee High School and Aga Khan School in Hyderabad before becoming the regional head for Aga Khan Education Service, India for South Southern Indian Schools and Outreach with the Government of Andhra Pradesh. She is the secretary for Indian Association for Preschool Education, a national level body. She has also been a member of academic resource group of government of Andhra Pradesh. She's been instrumental of developing a team of young professionals who have facilitated the culling out of minimum levels of learning for SCERT. She received extensive training as a master trainer in Phillips Andover, USA, Middlebury School of English, USA, and at Queen's University, Canada on school-based assessments. She has facilitated, facilitated several action research projects which establish the norms of cooperative learning techniques. In addition to this, she has been designing training programs and has facilitated many both in India and abroad. Her core belief in education can be summed up in three words, which she is very fond of, purpose, passion, and pedagogy. Welcome Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, I have, in fact, uh, my apologies for joining in a little late. And I was waiting for the link and there seems to be some problem. I received some one link. I was in with that. And then finally, I didn't want to keep you all waiting. So I quickly joined with my phone. Uh, so I will be logging off in my phone right now. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, starting off with my uh, laptop. Yes. So let me just leave this. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You know. Well, good to have so many of you here. And uh, uh, it's wonderful that, you know, I'm able to uh, address and speak to so many teachers at one go. Uh, well, um, my topic is, you know, uh, instructional design. Okay. And uh, when it comes to instructional design, so we are actually, you know, all of us as human beings, we're very fond of the word design. Okay. We love designer clothes. We love designer blouses. We love, we love everything, you know, which we feel. I wish, you know, some of you can keep your videos on. Otherwise, I will feel I'm addressing only the walls. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so what happens is, you know, we're very fond of, you know, anything designer. Right. So we have, there, we have a lot of things like, you know, designer clothes, designer, uh, uh, you know, stuff, designer homes, and you name it, okay? But uh, the lessons which we deliver as teachers, it is so very important that we learn to design the lessons effectively, okay? As you all know very well, you know, the, uh, the, the, the lessons that we deliver are, you know, going to impact so many students. Okay. So if I just ask you all, okay, what has been your experience as a student? I'm sure you had beautiful experiences. And these have been created or given to you by teachers who taught you. 
isn't it? So you will find that these little, uh, you know, sparks that you get here and there. So it's been my passion always to make teachers, whomever I interact with or whomever I work with or whomever I come across, okay? It's been my passion really to make each one of you make your classes the most inspiring ones of the lot. Okay, so how can we make that? How can we make? Okay, the first and foremost thing, when we do something we love the most, we do it the best. Yes or no? You can use the you can use the non-verbal cues, please. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which you can click. Yes. So you will find yes. So you will find that the the best of lessons are what we have to. Now, how are we going to create these best lessons? Okay, so when we do something we love the most, we do it the best, right? So let me take the example of, uh, before I go on to sharing something online with you all, hmm, let me tell you, let me take the example of a mother. Okay, when the mother is getting the daughter married. What does the mother do? Every single thing that the mother does, she does it beautifully. Whether it is getting the trousseau ready, whether it is getting the, uh, you know, things, uh, arrangements done, everything is perfect. Yeah? And how does one do it? because of love. So the first and foremost thing we need to do as a teacher is love our children. Okay, the more we connect and love our children, the better will be our classes. We don't, see we are, we don't take things as, you know, something which anybody can do, right? We start, we start thinking, planning, and doing things the best possible way. Okay, so when we are doing this, we need to remember certain tips, right? So I will be sharing with you. See, I am not a very great tech person, I should say. Yeah, in fact, when Sumati ma'am told me, I said, Sumti ma'am, you know, I don't think I am a great technological uh, whiz who will give you, you know, the best of uh, PPTs that way. But I will certainly share some matter, something which will be most effective for these teachers and which they will remember. So I'll be sharing about two or three uh, Word documents online. Mm, but... Uh, you know, what I want is more than anything else, I want you to remember my words, right? So let me just give me a second. I will organize what I have to share with you, right? Yes. Yes. Let me share my screen. Yes. Now, 
these are the steps in preparing a lesson, right? The first and foremost thing when we are preparing a lesson, when we are designing a lesson, okay? What do we need to do? What are we teaching this for? So when we are thinking about what we are teaching this for, what is in our mind? That the student must get X, Y, Z concepts clearly in the mind. Yes or no? So that is the first thing. So outlining what are the learning objectives of teaching any particular lesson is the first thing a teacher needs to do while designing the instructional model, right? The second thing is what at the end of this, what is going to be the outcome of what I am going to teach, right? Don't worry about taking notes. What I will do is I will pass this on, this handout on to the IIEM people and uh, you can get this from them, right? So once you learn, you know, you outline the learning objectives clearly or you articulate the learning objectives clearly, then the next step is how do you develop? How, what is that? that that one spark, what is the one spark that is going to give your lesson the impetus? Okay, that is going to make everybody alert, right? So, you know, if you go anywhere, you'll, you'll feel bored a little, you know, sometimes, especially, you know, a lecture like mine today, right now, will be, you know, because, you know, this is post-lunch, so everybody is a little drowsy, a little sleepy, a little this thing. So your attention will completely not be on me. So if I tell you something like this, that teachers, I am going to teach you something very nice. Okay, I am going to teach you how to catch lightning in a bottle. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to do anything like that. But if I tell you something like that, then, you know, even for a student who is very dull and who is very drowsy and everything, immediately they will wake up and they will, their antennas will be up and about and they will become alert. Isn't it? So the first and foremost thing one needs to do is think about the degree of alertness in the class. So how do you introduce that lesson? Okay, so it can be, you know, relating to something else. It can be, you know, something which they have already seen. So some, you know, spark has to be created to bring the students to the readiness mode of learning. All of us need that, isn't it? All of us need to get into a readiness mode for learning, right? So, which is very, very important. So, uh, it can be you know, it can be a simple poll now with the uh, you know online classes you have this polls which you can take up or you can have quizzes or you can have some you know the online classes somewhere I feel are the best it's a boon somebody asks you know they, they have a lot of, we had a lot of debate whether online classes are a boon or a bane. I feel it's quite a boon. Of course, in terms of not having social interaction, in terms of students not having the physical activity, that of course is, uh, you know, uh, irreplaceable loss for the children. But when it comes to classes as such, for children, it is definitely, you know, who are, in fact, a, a lot of my students, you know, they told me that, ma'am, we are learning 10% better than not. In a normal class, I had too many distractions. But in an online class, I am being very, very, uh, at least it's very simple for me to learn. Right? There seems to be some distraction somewhere. Uh, should I? Uh, 
no, ma'am. So there are participants who keep unmuting themselves, so we are muting them. So please, sir, uh, you can continue. Yeah, ma'am, you have muted yourself. Ma'am, you have muted yourself, ma'am. Yeah, I thought you know I can. Uh, if I'm a co-host, I can hard mute everybody. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'm giving you co-host, but we are. No, no, that's here. okay. That's okay, now. No problem. So, yes. uh, so what happens is that how can be provided for starting off your. Now the next part, when it comes to the uh, the next aspect of what one needs to do. Okay, the second aspect of what one needs to do is, you know, how will I check whether my students are connected to the topic or not, right? So for that, the most important thing would be that we ask students, right? So for right now, I'm sure you have a next session on, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, online classes, how to design online classes, but then making use of non-verbal cues is very, very important, right? Making use of annotation is also very important, okay? So I'm sure you'll be getting those tools also in the second uh, part of this uh, session, right? Then plan specific activities, what you're going to teach. You know, specifically today, uh, the fortunate part of online classes is everything is, you have wonderful OLAPs, you have wonderful uh, CBSC online, we have the Diksha app, we have, you know, all the museums world over, okay, have just left it, left everything open for people to see, right? There are virtual tours of every single place. Okay, so I was uh, uh, telling, you know, that, um, you know, when I had uh, flown to Nigeria, on the way I had seen, uh, you know, the Mount Kilimanjaro, which is a volcano. So it was so exciting to see, you know, from the flight, the, the uh, volcanic mountain, right? But today, you know, you just click, at the click of the button, you have the volcanic mountain which you're showing to the students through a virtual tour. Okay, so you can take the children for these virtual tours also, right? Now let me, I'm deviating a bit, let me come back to my lesson design. Okay, so explaining about the topic will be, the, most important part, right? So how do I start? I start with a <coughs> spark, right? And then we move on to giving the key points. Now, these key concepts that we are giving has to be done very, very, very clearly and succinctly. If we don't give, let me take a mathematics teacher if a mathematics teacher is not able to give, you know, the concepts with the clarity, students will develop a gap. Now, what happens where we go wrong as teachers is because we know everything. We feel our students also know everything. Right? Because we are well-versed, we feel our students are well-versed. Right? So we presume that that information is already with them. We should always go with the premise that our students do not know whatever we are teaching. So you teach from the scratch. Even if you are teaching a student, most of the classes today are heterogeneous classes. You don't have homogeneous classes where you have only the high flyers or only the students who are big. We have students of all ability levels, right? So we need to cater to each one of them, right? So, you know, it's best 
that you give all the concepts clearly and succinctly. Right? Once you design. So for that, you know, designing the body of the lesson is very important. So for this, the questions you need to ask yourself is, what will I do to explain the con topic? What will I do to illustrate the topic and probably in a different way? How can I engage students in the topic? What are some relevant real life examples, analogies or situations that will help students to understand the topic? What will students need to do to help them understand the topic better? Isn't it? So these are few important questions you need to ask yourself before designing your lesson. Okay, so it is very, very important. See, students' learning is based on some principles. One of the most important principle is you take children from known to unknown. I'm sure all of you as teachers have learned this. You have to take children from concrete to abstract. You don't start abstract straight away. You have to teach them concrete to abstract. Second most important thing is you have to teach them how to relate to real life situations. If one is learning trigonometry, how is trigonometry going to help them in their life? If one is learning coordinate geometry, how is coordinate geometry going to help them in their life? Where do you see coordinates? The whole earth is meshed with the coordinates the imaginary coordinates in the form of latitudes and longitudes, isn't it? So if you tell them these things, their life becomes very simple and easy for them, right? So going from simple to complex, concrete to abstract, <coughs> relating what they are learning to real life are the important things that one needs to have in Okay, then plan for the understanding. Now that you have explained the topic and illustrated it with different examples, you need to check the students' understanding. Okay, so what is this called? This is called as monitoring and adjustment. What do we mean by monitoring and adjustment? I'm sure, you know, see if you are cooking something, okay, you taste in between and you see whether it is tasty enough, is there enough salt in it, is the chili powder enough, is the spiciness just right, Do I, did I add something more, did I add something less, so that is a test for you to know whether the, uh, the item is being cooked properly. The same way you stop, you don't go at a breakneck speed and give it to the children. You stop somewhere, you pause for a while, and then you ask questions. What will you ask? How much of understanding did the students get? So in a class, if you've got a class of 30 students, you will find that 10 would have been really great. They know whether you teach them, you don't teach them, they will understand by themselves. Okay, you will still find some of them didn't understand. So how do you test? All 30 will you test? For this, the most important thing is choral answers. So you can give them signals to say that if it is yes, you will say this. If it is no, you will say this. So try to ask yes, no questions for you to understand whether they have got the grasp the concept or not, right? So the next thing is 
move on to what questions will I ask students for understanding as I'm telling you right now, right? And here, you know, an important strategy that, you, that will help you to manage time is to anticipate students' questions, right? Students will have a lot of doubts. They will immediately want to raise their hands. So there are teachers who give them opportunity in between right straight away to keep asking questions. And there are students who stop, who, who, who you know, uh, for there are teachers who feel that right in the middle, if I get distracted, I will not be able to deliver my lesson properly. At such times, the teacher has to give clear instructions that please write down, please write down, where am I? You know, what is my doubt? So that the student doesn't forget and you please allow a 10 minute interaction or question answer session at the end of every lesson, right? End of every day's lesson, right? Develop a conclusion and or a preview. Now, this is very important. But as teachers, we need to remember one thing that we are not going to teach the entire lesson on one day, isn't it? We will teach one concept in that particular lesson, right? We will be teaching just a concept in that particular lesson and we won't be teaching the whole thing. So for that, you know, it is very, very important that, you know, you conclude every day's teaching effectively okay each day's teaching has to be concluded very effectively right then create a realistic timeline okay you need to remember the time is very important okay i always tell people that in school the only thing that we don't have you know is time right because we are always, we have a course curriculum to complete. We have to complete it most effectively, most effectively, right? Uh, yeah, there is somebody who raised the hand, uh, Miss Amita Rao. I will give you at the end of the session, a, you know, the, uh, the let us, uh, you know, discuss it out. Right, ma'am? Okay. So, you will need to give the time for the students. Yeah, I mean, uh, the effective management of time. So unless and until we crisply manage our time, we are going to lag behind. Okay, there are teachers who are most, most effective. They will give one topic, you know, a sufficient amount of time. But what they realize is, and the students' learning will become really perfect. But what they'll realize is, especially for board going classes, they will realize that they're lagging behind in time for the other topics. Yes or no? Yeah. So these are, so estimate how much time each of the activities will take and then plan some extra for each for each. Then when you prepare the lesson, you must, you know, actively indicate how much time you will expect, it will expect to be taken. Plan a few minutes at the end of every class to answer any remaining questions and to add up to the key points. Then plan an extra activity or discussion questions if you have some time left right? Be flexible. Teachers, this is very, very important. This is very, very important because you cannot be rigid with your timings or with your, you know, class as such. You may find that your best of lesson plans, your most foolproof concrete lesson plan can go for a toss if you find the students are not receptive enough. So looking at the student's mood, looking at what they want, 
you can make the changes that are essential. Okay, so plan a few minutes at the end of the class to answer the remaining key points. So being flexible, now again, being flexible and being ready to adjust your lesson based on your students' needs. That's where, you know, when you do the monitoring and adjustment, you find that students have not grasped the way you have planned. Go the way they want to learn to teach them that. Okay, so be very flexible in how you, you know, change your lessons from time to time. Right, then end of the lesson, it is very important. Now, generally as teachers, I find that you know, lesson planning becomes a monotonous repertoire for the teachers because they're going and writing. It's, it's such a mechanical job. You're taking something, you're writing. Okay, my, this, my, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so uh, initially, you know, when I started my career, I began my career in a, um, in a convent school. Okay, where I... I mean, I, I was a very, very raw and very new teacher, I should say, you know. So when I went on to teach, you know, it was like I used to look up to the teachers who were my seniors. What I realized was some of them planned in the beginning of a, their career. They were probably 20-year-old teachers teachers who taught for 20 years. So they planned a year and they used the plan for 20 years. Okay, that will neither make it interesting and exciting for the student or for your own self because you become a mechanical robo. You're going there, you're delivering your lesson and you're coming. <coughs> Is your lesson plan reflecting are you reflecting on your lesson plan? Is it reflecting your personality? Okay. Are you getting the end result that you want? Very, very important as teachers. Sometimes, you know, I have teachers, uh, you know, who bargain with me. They say, ma'am, this week we are very busy, ma'am. We cannot... We may not be able to, do. we had some program, we had an annual day or we had something and we, we may not be able to do our lesson plan. So I always tell them that I don't want your lesson plan. I, for me, it doesn't matter whether you make a lesson plan or you, you don't make, but the lesson plan is for you, not for me. Okay, I don't want any plan, but you should have clarity on what you are teaching how you're teaching and how effective your lesson will be, you should be a role model for your students, right? So this is what I tell all students, all teachers whom I come across, right? So reflecting on your lesson plan is very, very important, right? So this is about designing your lessons, right? But I have a couple of more things. Sumati ma'am, how much of time do I have? <clears throat> ma'am, we have passed time. We have passed time. Is there ma'am, another five more minutes, please. Uh, so do they have any questions and answers for me? I can take that. Otherwise, I thought I'll take a little on learning styles and, you know, other things also. But uh, they can uh, ask me any questions if they wish to. Somebody had put up their hand. Uh, Anvesha, somebody had put up their hand some time back. Uh, hello, ma'am. This is Rashmi here. Yes, Miss Rashmi. Oh, good afternoon uh, to you. Yeah, as you said, if nobody has the questions, can we briefly see the learning styles and all? 
can we can we just get a gist of it <laughs> it would be lovely to hear it from you yes 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 i will share it with you all thank you ma'am Ma'am, in the meanwhile, there's one question. Can you yes. explain a reflection of lesson plan? Very good question too. Very good question too. See, just like you know, uh, when we dress up, okay, when we dress up, we we see, okay, is my fall right? Am I, you know, is my hair right? Have I put my bindi in the proper way or not? Isn't it? just like you see your own reflection in the mirror and you see whether everything is right it is very important that we reflect on the lesson that we have done for the day what went right in my lesson what didn't go well in my lesson okay so that small reflection of what was right what was not so good what did my students like what did my students not like were was my class effective were in my you know no uh, the choral answers which i have taken from students have majority of them not understood my lesson which make gives me an indication that probably my way of teaching that lesson was not effective enough so that will give me and teachers we must make small notes in our lessons no small notes to say that this was good this was not so good that will make us you know uh, when we make our lesson plans as i told you don't plan one year use it for 20 years but plan every year but these little lesson notes will help you when you're planning the next time when you're planning next time the notes you know we generally forget you know whatever we have uh, planned out so it will help us in uh, knowing uh you know where we stand what didn't go too well so what can i change in that what are the new trends that are there okay all of us as teachers today i must tell that you know when the lockdown began we many of us didn't know much about either the tools and uh, you know zoom tools and what is there what is not there we were clueless but now we have become such good experts in using non verbal cues in using you know uh, whatever we are doing right now you know, we have become adept at using the tech tools right so let me just share my screen and tell you uh, yes excuse me ma'am this is supraja yes ms supraja Uh, ma'am does it mean we have to do we have to write the reflection of lesson plan after the execution ma'am yes the same day if you write you know i suggest don't make a big elaborate reflection column and write wherever in your lesson plan itself keep some note uh, you know on the margins you can write okay write for yourself don't write for anybody don't write for your principal or for your uh, coordinator or for somebody else it's for your own self okay don't i always tell teachers don't do anything to please anybody do anything everything for yourself and your students okay your students are your your primary constituency do it for your students and do it the best right now let me just quick Please go to the learning styles. Now, uh, unfortunately, today we are in a very, very difficult situation. But basically, you will find that there are three types of learners. There are the auditory learners, those who listen and grasp and learn. right there are the visual learners the people who see and then they can grasp it then there are 
kinesthetic learners. That is learning by doing. Right? So basically, you have to remember these three things. Now, you may ask me, how can I cater to this in my lessons? Right? So, you know, we have different steps of lesson delivery. Isn't it? We are giving, we are prepared, we are giving the, we are first testing their previous knowledge. Then we are giving them the key concepts. Then we are testing whether the students have understood, not understood. Then the next step is you are, you are adjusting, you are giving them additional information. Then you are making them do practice. You are making them do group practice. Then we are making them do independent practice. Then you are, you are issuing, you are giving an assessment or a test. So there are so many steps. Na? So each of these steps, when you plan out, plan it in such a way that this part of my lesson, I will do it in a kinesthetic way. Say, for example, if you are teaching them about the landforms of any, uh, you know, uh, country, right? So when you are teaching them, you are showing, you are first talking about landforms. Oh, mountains are like this. So you are giving a visual uh, presentation of the same, right? Then you are making them listen. You can even make them listen to the sounds. Even, you know, English teachers, they can make children listen to beautiful sounds of things, right? Just you plan it out in such a way that you tell all children, now you're closing your eyes and you're going to listen to these sounds. Right? They get, they get the grasp of that. Then make them prepare the landforms. This is a plateau. This is a mountain. This is a valley. Right? So you are teaching them how to... See, this learning becomes a lifelong learning. Teachers, I must tell you, you know, a long back. See, my own experience goes back 30 years. Okay, my own experience as a teacher, I have learned from different people. I can never say that I was born with this intelligence and I am what I am today because I know everything. I, I, I was born with this kind of a thing. It's not like that. I have learned from different people. Okay, so there was this wonderful lady by name Elinia Duckworth. Okay, I happened to attend her workshop, right? And she was a student of Jean Piaget, right? So she was a pretty old lady when I met her, right? And she taught us how to make learning lifelong. And I'll tell you, she took an example, a very beautiful example. She made two people stand on two ends of the room, right? And she made one person stand in the center of the room holding a mirror, right? So the person at that end and the person at this end, their faces had to be seen in the mirror, right? They had to adjust themselves and stand in such a way that their faces are seen in the mirror. Then she made us draw a line diagonally this way and that way and the center line to where the person with the mirror is standing. And you know what she told us? And that is so beautiful and nobody will ever forget if you do it with your students. The angle of reflection is equal to the angle of refraction. Okay, so it was, it's, a, it's something that you know a student will never forget. This is lifelong learning. So as teachers, we have to keep thinking, how do we make students learn in this fashion? Right, my dear teachers? So I hope I made little sense somewhere, but it was wonderful and such a big lot. So thank you, Sumiti ma'am. And thank you, everybody, for being such wonderful audience and uh, have a wonderful time and a great, great career as a teacher. And I love all of you. Thank I you, ma'am. all teachers. Thank you, ma <laughs> thank you so thank much, ma'am. Thank you, 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 ma'am. Thank you,
so nice it was very wonderful thank you so much lali thank, thank you, you so much thank you